Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. I'm Sam Madavi at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals in Rosemont, Illinois with Wayne Carini and Phil Pataki. And as you can see, Car Capsule makes some custom stuff as well, like the snow globe behind us. Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. This is gonna be one awesome car. And I said, it doesn't even run yet. <laughs> and look at it now, it's amazing. Who doesn't love the Ghostbusters? Behind me, I have a perfect replica of the movie car, and Lauren's gonna tell me all about it. This is a 1959 Miller Meteor Futura Duplex. What that means is it's basically a limousine style, windows all around, hearse and ambulance combination car. In 1982, it was sold off to a painter, and it was used for about 16 years before a family bought it and used it as daily transportation. Really? Yes. And then they decided to restore the car, but unfortunately the owners fell on ill health, sold it to me mid-restoration in early 2009. So I spent an entire day with the actual movie car, measuring every single detail of all the placements and taking pictures of course, so everything you see on the car is where it is on the movie car. You've even got it down to the proper CD model. Yes. And you had to slow down the lights yes. to match the lights on the movie car. That's correct. That's attention to detail uh, right there. I worked really hard on making sure that what you saw on the movie car is what you see with my car. It's pretty much an original Cadillac still. That's you correct. You maintain it, but it's got the original powertrain, original brakes and everything. That's right. Everything is original except for the paint and all the roof rack stuff. I'm here with Alan and Cindy, and they just got the best award you can get at any car show, the Wayne Carini pick of the whole show with their beautiful Catalina. Thank Tell you. us about your car. In 63 and 64, and 62 even, they called it a Ventura trim, and that's what this car has, where Pontiac made a Ventura in 61 that was a separate car on its own. But wow. then they just switched the trim package and consolidated all into it the deal. That is so cool. Now, this is a 421 engine. 421. It's got the eight lugs. Eight lugs, right. That's because it does zero to 60 in yeah. under six seconds. Right. With those bias ply tires. Right. And what right. did you say with uh, how much better it would do with the well, newer tires? I had one back in the day, so I know what they are, and you respect them. This car is bare bones, no power steering, no power brakes. Whoever purchased it just wanted to go racing with it and have fun. I bet you were really excited to win that award, huh? Oh, yes, from Wayne Carini. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a real honor. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He absolutely loved the car. Yeah. Dave, walking in this morning, I could see that this is a Mustang, but from the front end, I was totally lost. Tell me about this car. It's the Ford Mustang II show car. So in 63, Ford had already built the Mustang One, which doesn't look anything like this. It was right. a two-seater sports car with a transverse four-cylinder. Right. They showed it, people responded to the Mustang name. Problem was they knew what the 64 was gonna look like and it didn't look like the One. So what this car is, is it's a transition piece between the Mustang One and the production car. The chassis itself is a prototype, one of the first 200 64 Mustangs built. So it was built in 63 as a prototype, 
they tested it, and then this car was sent to Dearborn Steel Tube where it was converted to this. Uh, the story goes that when they took this into the styling studio and they were looking at it, one of the executives didn't like the fact that it was a hard top. So they literally cut the top off of it, and when we look at it, you can see the top is chopped and the windshield's laid way back, yeah. and it changes the whole look of the car. Absolutely does. That is incredible. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, where does this thing live? It's at the Detroit Historical Society. You can find us at DetroitHistorical.org. Uh, all of our collection is available online because of our digitization program, and we rotate our cars in and out of the museum, so something is always new at our place. We have to go to a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show. Sometimes we have to go back and readdress something on an old product. Sometimes that's to make an improvement to the installation or to the product in general. One of those products is our shift indicator. We've had these for many years and they've, they've worked fine, but with new technology, we've actually been able to add some options for the end user. Our normal indicator for years has had just a red light. It worked for almost everybody, but now we've got the ability to give you different colored lights and different colored intensities. We managed to fit all that into the same package that we've always had. So if you already have one and you want to upgrade, you can simply swap out the LED lens and you can swap out the box that controls it and you're good to go. If you want to install a whole new one, you just get the same standard kit we've always had and it bolts in and it performs perfectly. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show brought to you by Car Capsule. John, this is an absolute beautiful Super B. Thank this you. is one you restored yourself. Purchased it from an estate. Uh, a friend of mine turned me on to it, and it was on a rotisserie and had been painted. The paint job and the body work weren't that nice, so I took it home and immediately had it stripped and started over from scratch. And you painted this car? I painted this car. Yeah, me that and my so friend. Impressive. Yeah, my friend of uh, 40 years, him and I have done probably 12, 14 cars together. Wow. So, As a hobby. As a hobby, these are, these are all hobbies. And my wife's a little upset because I never sell them because I do all the work myself. <laughs> I fall in love with everyone and I never sell them. Good for you. <laughs> you know, I really get into the research on them to make sure the bolts and the nuts and the markings are correct. That's just, I find that interesting. Absolutely. So that's what I do. This is a Coronet, based off a of Coronet. Um, the Super B is the sport model of it. And this particular model is an A12 and they only made 1487 I believe is the number of these cars so it's a rare car I have battery tenders on mine because I never drive my cars <laughs> <laughs> We have something very special for you behind us. I got Wayne Carini and Phil Pataki next to me, and Wayne's gonna describe the whole car and its history. Sam, this is an unbelievable car. This is the Hirohata Mercury, and is the holy grail of all custom cars ever built. Now, why would it be called that? Well, because it, it had such drastic design changes. Nobody had ever done a car like this to be that radical. So they cut the roof seven inches in the back and four inches in the front. To cut the frame so it's dropped almost to the ground. To do major changes to a car, they were customizing cars, but only a little bit at a time. This was a total overhaul. That is incredible. Now, yeah. someone very famous had a part in building this car. So George and Sam Barris of Barris Customs, that of course have built so many custom cars, yep. for movies especially. Yep. This is one of their first works of art in, in 1952. To be able to come out with a car like this in that period of time, was something never heard of. And they were known as lead sleds. Yeah. And the reason that is, is that because they used so much lead to transform the car into something special. I did not know that. Yeah, so that's why it's known as a lead sled. I thought they were just heavy and long. Yeah, well they're heavy and long because they put a lot of lead into them. <laughs> because there was no other fillers. Yeah. So this is all gas welded and then to smooth everything out, it's handcrafted. It, it's handcrafted. As yeah. you were saying earlier, you have people on one side doing something, yeah. on the other side shaping stuff, so the, there's a little difference between the left and the right That's side. That's what makes it so cool. Yeah. And, and then, of course, this pillar. So this would have been a pillar here, a B pillar. They took that B pillar out and then totally reshaped the whole car with these windows wow, like this. You so, would have thought that's factory. You know, what we've done is we've had this car in the car capsule building yep. for two days now, and to be able to drive it out 
totally dust free, Phil. Every event we go to, everyone's paying detailers, dusting their cars, cleaning their cars 24 7. We pulled it out of there, the top of that thing's all dusty and dirty. Look at it. It is in showroom condition and presentation. We preserve and protect, and we're honored to protect this vehicle. This is one of one of none. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we brought this in, and with everybody moving around in here trying to set up for the last couple days, it would have been dusty and dirty like crazy. Everybody's wiping their cars every 10, 15 minutes. Accidents can happen. Yeah. So we put it in the car capsule. No, no accidents could happen. Yep. Every, everything was nice and safe. Hi, I'm Phil Pataki with Car Capsule. Today, we're in a real life application where life happens. And we got our beautiful CF1 with a beautiful Porsche in there and we protect it from dust, dirt, life that's happening in the garage, whether it's a ladder falling down, the dogs running by, jumping up and down on it. It doesn't matter what happens, your kids' bikes, it's protected. The way you put that car in there is the way you're gonna take it out in perfect condition. Visit us at carcapsule.com where we protect you from everything bad in your house. I finally made it out to the car capsule facility. I'm here with Phil Pataki and we're gonna be showing you guys some of the ins and outs of the car capsule warehouse and we're gonna be going through the showcases and the evolution of them. Many years ago at SEMA, we debuted this and won five international awards, and it was off to the races. You know, the market had nothing like it. You know, we had our bubble for, what, 20 some years, and everyone always wanted something freestanding. And the showcase is the answer to that. Inflatable frame, two side doors right and left, drive-in convenience, filtered protection, no dust, no dirt, no condensation. That's where it all began. Well, that's what you need to protect that beautiful Impala in there and that old, is that yours? I probably had this 20 years. I, I always wanted one in high school and when the time came, I, I bought it and uh, it's, it's a fun car for the family. Yeah. But this is our signature series. So this we debuted at the next SEMA, double stitching on the zippers, uh, enhanced floors, a carbon fiber floor, looking carbon fiber, mm -hmm. uh, LED light kits, and comes with the battery backup system, the IntelliCharge. IntelliCharge. So that IntelliCharge, you put a car away, the best way to store it is in our product, but now we gotta do the battery. So right. we charge the battery and run our fan at the same time. There's a power loss that automatically switches over and runs my fan off of your battery. When power resumes, it replenishes your battery. But it also has DSP, dual surge protection, which is awesome because it's a surge protector for your battery and a surge protector for the fan. And when there's a power surge, a lightning strike, a storm, over, under power, you need to protect that battery and fan. And that's all in built in IntelliCharge. So that comes with this model and comes with our carbon fiber model. That was the next evolution and what guy doesn't like carbon fiber accessories on their car. And so we came out with the carbon fiber. It's got a look and feel, a texture the same floor and the LED light kit and the charger. And this is actually, it's thicker, it's stronger, but it has to be because for us to get that embossing to make it look that way, we gotta go with a thicker PVC. But for the customer, it's now even stronger. So if something falls on it, and until people see it and, and touch it, the airflow, that's one thing that's so hard to capture on camera. Continuous airflow, continuous air change means zero condensation. If you eliminate condensation, no mold, mildew, dust, or rust, the way you put it away is the way you take it out. I'm here with Phil Pataki and Wayne Carini in the car capsule booth at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals Car Show. Every year at SEMA we try to come out with something new. So the, the year after we won all the awards and got on the map with the showcase, we came out with the signature series. Comes with a carbon fiber looking floor, comes with a light kit, black zippers, that tuxedo look, clean look. You got a bright car, 
Looks great in the white one. Comes with the LED light kit too. Now, what about this carbon fiber one? Oh man, this is the killer. So it looks like carbon fiber. It's the upper case of the greatest car capsules of the world. This showcase really does it all. It, it fits in so many people's garages and looks the part. I like the white, don't get me wrong, Phil. I really like the white, the black one, but this carbon fiber look, it, it really knocks it out of the park. Whether it's a new C8, a Porsche, or even the, the modern muscle, mm -hmm. they all want carbon fiber. Yep. And so this answered that. With the white stitching, just those little subtle details, suddenly it just looks sexier. It's the best way to store your investment and take care of it. And don't forget, all roads lead to car capsule. We'll be right back. John, from a distance, I can tell your Corvette was different than any other C8 I've seen, just from the front louvers and the vents. The back is so nicely done that you really can't tell it's been widened. Tell me about the car. So this is my uh, C8 Corvette, as you can tell. So we wide-bodied it. This has got a Sagala wide-body kit. We widened the front five inches and the rear seven inches. It's got 355 Pirelli tires on the back, forge line wheels. I just wanted it to be a little bit more aggressive look. Been a Corvette guy my whole life. I just felt like the C8 needed a little more curves to it. Yeah. So that's why we kind of built it the way we did. It really changed the look of it. I mean, like I said, it was done so nice, seven inches. Yeah. That is huge. You oh, can't yeah. really tell. Well, it's and, done and so nice. When you start looking at the, the lines of the car, to me, this is what it, it should have been. been. This is what the Z06 should be as well. So we built this for a customer out of Missouri. Uh, he came to me and said, you know, I want a C10 that I've never seen before, which is really difficult. So we tried to really kind of make this be more like a muscle car. We used a lot of themes, so it's very Corvette inspired. The paint is pro spray paint. It actually fades seven colors top to bottom, which what? if you don't look for it, you can't really tell. <laughs> no, until you see something. It's got a ghosted checkerboard that runs down the side. The finish on that interior. The stereo, the motorization that you added to the rear. Absolutely. That is so, that's something you see in supercars today with well, the motorized wing. And again, it kind of goes back to us trying to do something that we haven't seen in a C10. You know, the fact that that customer trusts us to kind of come up with those concepts and ideas. And when I did the rendering for him and he first saw it, he was like, you can make my truck look like that. <laughs> and so, and this was a nine month build, start to finish. Greg, I was walking by earlier and I noticed a sign on this, the Black Ghost, and yeah. someone told me the story, and I want to hear it from you. This was your father's car, right? Yeah, it was my dad's car. So he special ordered it in 69. He went to the dealership, he special ordered it, and if you notice, a lot of the options on it, like being black and with the gator top. Yeah, the gator those top, I've never seen that before. Yeah, you have to special order that. He got the big Hemi in it, and it's a four speed. So he wanted a car to race, and right. that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to something very nice and that's what he got. And he was a police officer, right? Yes, so he would go out at night, sneak out, go down to Woolworth or Telegraph or Stucker and he would race the car, he would beat the guy and he'd yeah. drive away. <laughs> and people were like, what's going on? Because he didn't want anybody to know who he was. Wow, and it's part of the U.S. Historical Registry? Yeah, the Haggerty's Drivers Foundation with the Historical Vehicle Association. Yeah. It's been inducted into the Library of Congress for 500 years. So that is really yeah. cool. And you got it, gave it to you, you're gonna hand it down to your son one day yes. and just keep it in the family. We're, we're more into preservation, trying to keep it exactly like it is until we have to do something to it. This is a great story. Thank you so much for sharing it. I know everyone's gonna love to hear about this one. Well, Frank, Frank Jr., I know you guys are excited. You won the Car Capsule Pick Award on this beautiful Torino. When did you get it, and when was it restored, do you think? It was restored in the early 2000s. We bought it about seven years ago now. Absolutely beautiful, a convertible too. And it's a GT, this is rare. Do you guys take the shows often? Yes, we do. We go out as much as we can with it, and we have a trailer, so we'll take the car out and won't be afraid to go a couple hundred miles with the car and then take it to a show. We go down to the shore, we go down to the Maryland, we go to the Jersey Shore. And I just noticed you allowed all the kids to come over here and play with it, get in it, shift the gears. That's really special. 
you know what? It's it's all about fun, and all, all these cars someday will go to the younger generation. And you know, when they're that young, and you get them excited and interested, and you get them in the car playing with it, just like I know you remember being a kid going to the dealership with your dad and yeah. checking out the cars in the showroom. Exactly. Yeah. There's something real special about that, you and know? They did that, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And this is so cool. This was well worthy of the car capsule certificate. One day, I'd like to see it in a series or a showcase. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Love Thank to you do so it. much, Frank. Thank Frank you. Jr. Congratulations again on winning the award. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. That's a wrap for me here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Hope you guys enjoyed this show as much as I did. The unique part about this event is that every car you see is by invitation only. Hope to see you guys next year.